In this video, we're going to fire up the Vizio CoStar with Google TV for the very first time. After we fire it up, we're going to set it up and check out the user interface on this device. So let's get to it. So I have my Vizio CoStar attached to my television set here via HDMI. And if you checked out my previous video, which was the unboxing video on this device, you'll know that I don't have a cable box that has an HDMI out. So I'm not going to be able to use the live TV functions on this device. But if you have a cable box with an HDMI out, then you can actually view live TV through this device. It has an HDMI pass-through. Again, because I don't have that, I'm not going to be able to review those functions on this device. But I just wanted to mention that those are available. So the device is hooked up to my television set, like I said, via HDMI. And I'm going to plug it in for the very first time. And you will see the splash screen and the setup process for the first time as I see it. So here we go. There we go, we get the Vizio logo there. Okay, the first screen here, it says, insert the batteries into the remote control and use the navigation keys, left, right, up and down, and OK buttons to navigate the setup screens. Now, as you saw in my previous video, I already put the batteries into the remote, so I'm just going to hit the OK button here, and it should take us to the next step. So you see here we're on step one, and it looks like at the bottom of the screen there's six steps. It says connect your remote control. Now, as you saw, I already hit the OK button, so there is some communication between the remote and the device, but it seems like I do still have to pair the devices together. So it says pair your remote control via Bluetooth to enable the keyboard and touchpad on the remote control. Hold down the record and the blue buttons for five seconds and release. Select the connect button below to begin the connection process. So I will hit the record button up here and the blue button down here for five seconds and then release. And then I'm going to hit connect. And the connection was successful. Step two is maximize the screen size. Adjust your display area to provide the best screen presentation. Now, if you're familiar with Google TV at all, this is something that you do on all Google TV devices. So let's hit the OK button here to begin. Press and hold up on your remote until you no longer see the white screen above this box. Well, I don't see any white screen above there, so I'm just going to hit continue. And then it says press right, press and hold right on your remote until you no longer see the white screen to the right of this box. Well, again, I don't see white anywhere, so I'm just going to hit continue again. And then it says press down, press and hold down on your remote until you no longer see the white screen below this box. Again, I don't see any white screen anywhere. I guess I'm just going to hit continue again. And the same with the left hand side. So I'm not sure if it's totally calibrated because I never saw any white there, but we're just going to hit continue anyway. Now it says maximize your screen area. If you still see white along any edge, select start over. If the screen fits, select continue. Well, it appears to fit, so let me hit continue. Okay, step three, which I edited out, was actually signing into my home wireless network. So basically it searched for the wireless signals in my house. I signed into my home wireless network and I used the QWERTY keyboard on the back side of this device to actually put in my password. So now we're on step four. It says Google account registration. Sign in with your Google account and it allows you to put your account name, your password, and then it says why do I need to sign in? 
A Google account is required to sync Google applications such as photos and podcasts to your Google TV device. You can sign in with an existing Google account or create a new one in a few simple steps. And then you have sort of an agreement on the bottom which says by using Google TV, you agree to the Google Universal Terms of Service, the Google Universal Privacy Policy, and the additional terms of service for Google TV devices. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sign into my Google account and I'll join up with you on the other side of that. Okay, step five is the Visio warranty. It says, please provide the following information to register for warranty and support. So it wants my name, my email address, which is already filled in from my Gmail account, my zip code and phone number. So let me fill all that in and I'll join with you on the other side of that. Okay, we're on step six and it says set up your devices. Set up your devices to work with your remote control. So you can actually use the remote as a universal remote. Using your remote control keypad, type the unique name for your co-star. This makes it easy to locate on your local area network. Now, it gives you a default name of co-star network name, which is co-star. I think I'm gonna leave it and just hit continue. So I'm gonna go back down here and hit continue. Okay, it says the co-star will try to retrieve the most accurate TV channel guide information. Please verify your zip code. And it has my zip code in there because I entered it earlier. And then it says the co-star can control your TV volume and power if you provide your manufacturer and model information. Look closely at your TV, type the first letters of the manufacturer's brand name, then choose that name from the drop-down menu. Now, I have a unique situation here. Like I said, I can't use the live TV functions on this device, unfortunately, because then I could unlock the full power of the Google TV. It would be nice if Google TV offered coaxial support instead of just HDMI. Also, I have my television set hooked up to a receiver. So if I want to control the volume, I'm going to have to put in the information of my receiver. Okay, just like all the other Google TV devices, the Vizio CoStar enables you to control your other devices. From your cable or satellite box, to your DVR, your Blu-ray player, your media internet box, your DVD player, or other. And it also allows you to control a receiver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to audio receiver here, and I'm going to set that up and just show you how you can actually set up this device to control another device. So we're going to go here. It says device type, audio receiver. Look closely at your audio receiver. Type the first letters of the manufacturer's brand name, then choose the name from the drop-down menu. Again, it's the Sony device, and I'm gonna click there and hit continue. And there we go. The STR-D665 is on the list here. So I'm just gonna select that and hit continue and it should hopefully, and let's see if I can adjust the volume on the receiver. All right, and it actually works, that's really nice. First try right out of the gate, it works, so I'm gonna hit yes, and the audio receiver was set up successfully. All right, it gives me a congratulations. CoStar setup complete, you have completed setup. To learn how to use the remote touchpad, select remote demo. To start using Visio via CoStar, select Finish and save your settings. The CoStar will restart. Might as well walk through the remote demo while we're here because this is an instructional video. So I'm gonna hit Remote Demo. And it shows you here, you slide your finger to move the cursor, tap or double tap to select. And if you slide along the right edge, you can scroll up and down. And then it shows you to drag an item press and hold the dash key, which is at the bottom of the remote right here. And as you're doing that, you slide your finger across the touchpad and then release the dash key to drop whatever item you wanted to drag and drop. I'm gonna go and hit close here. And the setup is complete. I'm gonna hit finish and it's going to restart the device. Okay, it says over the air update available. For August 24th, 2012, your stream player requires an update. Please select OK to download the update. Update now for improved multi-channel audio output performance. Of course, I want to get the OTA update, so I'm going to hit OK. And it's downloading the update. 
So it's going to download, install, and restart the system. So I'm going to let it do that and join up with you on the other side of that. Okay, so the firmware on the Vizio CoStar is up to date. And this is what you see here if you don't have the device hooked up to a live TV stream. You just get the Vizio logo or basically a Vizio wallpaper. Now, on the remote here, you have a Vizio button. And if you press that, you get some apps that appear on the left-hand side of the screen. And it gives you some favorite apps right out of the gate. Amazon On Demand, MGO, Netflix, and OnLive. Now, one of the cool things about this device is that you can actually use OnLive on it right out of the gate. It's built right in. And if you want the OnLive controller, I believe it's $50. You order it and then just pair it up with the Vizio CoStar itself. So that's pretty cool. And while all the updates were happening, I was looking on the quick start guide here, which interestingly enough is printed on bamboo paper, which is pretty cool. Anyway, while I was looking through the quick start guide, I saw MGO on there, and I'll just read you the description. MGO is a new multi-screen entertainment app that elegantly streamlines all of your media together in one place, including movies, music, TV, and more, and allows you to enjoy content you want when you want it, either at home or on the go. When you want instant entertainment, just go to MGO. So I will look into that a little bit further, but it sounds pretty interesting. But that's one of the apps that's on top there as your favorite apps. Now, if you go down to all apps, and I'm just going to navigate this with the directional button here, you see you have bookmarks, clock, downloads, MGO, the Google Play Store, which is nice, and we'll look into that in a second, Google Chrome, favorites, Netflix, OnLive, Photos, Playpoint, Live TV, which again, if your setup allows, you could watch live TV through here. Made for TV Spotlight, Settings, Search, TVs and Movies, User Manual, Widget, Widget Board, YouTube, and those are your apps. So let's go to the Google Play Store right out of the gate here and see what's available. So here's the Google Play Store and you have Featured for TV, you have News Republic for Google TV, Dolphin, Yup TV, GTV, Me Genius, Smarty for TV, Quello for Google TV, Droplets TV, AOL HD. Let's go to View All here. And I believe this device is running Android Honeycomb. So here are all the apps that are featured for TV on this device. And... I'm going to do a full review on the Vizio CoStar with Google TV. This is just pretty much an overview. So I will cherry pick what is interesting in the Google Play Store, but you do have Google Play Music here, which is of interest. You back out of this and go back to the home here. So, so far I actually like this Android skin. If this was set up to a live TV stream, I'd have the live TV stream running in the background where it's black there, and then I could bring up my apps at any time and check out what's going on, which I like a lot. Let me go into the settings here real quick. Now here's where I can set up the universal remote capabilities if I do add a device or I want to change something, uh, such as controlling the television set or a DVD player or something like that. Let me just go down to the system settings here. Okay, I checked the system info and I am running Honeycomb on this device, Android 3.2. Let's just check out what MGO is real quick. Be ready when it's ready. Sign up at mgo.com slash Vizio. Well, I'll have to check into that. Let's check the Netflix interface on this device and see if it's the newest version or the previous to newest version. Okay, it looks like the newest version of Netflix on this device, and that's pretty much par for the course for Google TV devices. And for some reason, the DVD art isn't populating here. I would assume that's an issue where it has to load up. So I'll keep you updated if that continues to be a problem, but that's the situation at this time. One thing I just wanted to note 
is that when you do use the QWERTY keyboard side of the remote, it deactivates the other side of the remote and vice versa. That way you don't accidentally hit a key on the underside of the remote when you don't want to. So far, I like what I see with this device, but I will return with a full review on the Vizio CoStar Google TV device. So stay tuned for that. The only two things I would like on this device that currently aren't on it are pretty small. The first of which being an actual light on the Vizio CoStar itself. As it stands right now, you don't know when it's on or when it's off just by looking at the box itself. Another thing I would like on the device is some sort of boot up screen because as it stands right now, I can turn on the Vizio CoStar and not really get a visual cue on my television set if it's on or not. Just some small things, not a big deal. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you wanna help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. And as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.